and it grips. Oh, pill the meter bottle. <laughs> Caveman style. Yeah, we've just decided, you know, along with uh, these importers, that sometimes 750 mils just isn't enough wine. So bump it up, bump it up to a thousand. We got ourselves <laughs> a liter party. Yes, we do. Liter, <laughs> I hardly know her. Let's keep going. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Claire Tracy. Today we wanted to shed light and talk more about mm. La Boutanche and Litrona, two um, similar concepts from two different uh, importers, but they kind of, and they do show themselves very mm. differently um, in how the wines come across, even though people sort of think they're one and the same, like Selections de la Vigna is kind of the Spanish version of La Boutanche, and although that's not technically incorrect, mm. they are pretty different when you when you start tasting a, a lot of the wines, so should we jump yeah. right into La Boutanche? Definitely, and La Boutanche is imported by Selection Massal, and the Litrona is Selection de la Vigna, just to clarify, and so it's, and they're both just, they're both labels more than anything, like the Boutanche and Litrona. So jumping right in, these are, and what they mainly have in common, they're in liters. They're in liters, like, and they, they have this sort of, uh, this concept of being like glue glue wine, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can actually, like, if you wanted to drink it out of the bottle, you could, probably could, right? Like Mass it's just appeal, like, yeah. juicy, easy to drink. Mm -hmm. um, La Boutanche, so they mainly are French wines, and mm -hmm. each label says La Boutanche, and mm -hmm. you kind of don't know what it is until you turn it around and realize, oh, this is Domaine Santa Maria. This is Andy Knaus from Germany. Um, they have one American producer that they work with as well. But um, you'll you'll find that the La Boutanche wines, they're, they're kind of mm -hmm. cleaner. They're, um, I don't want to say easier drinking, but they're a little brighter. They're, they're in a natural vein, but they're a little bit kind of, um, there's a little bit more kind of crowd appeal, right? They're easier yeah. drinking. Um, these are super easy drinking as well, but they are, the Litronas are, we'll say, Natty. They're made with, none of them are made with any sulfur I've additions. I've been calling them like the Spanish rat, a nat pack, like instead of rat pack, and like it just yes. kind of like. BT. It, it, she, yeah. she. Like, well, because it's all a bunch of cult natural producers from Spain, and so they're all really highlighting the style specific from each region, and I think that's like. Uh, so we should also say that Litrona came out this year and it's kind of a product of the pandemic, which is really cool. Like, hi, what's a way that we can kind of bottle under a big label? And because it's it's devastating. It's been devastating to that industry and it's been hard to make money doing it. So this also is makes it easier for them to get wine out. Winemakers and the importer exactly. and us and <clears throat> distributors and and. Yeah, um, definitely. All let's under. let's jump into this guy first. Um, so we wanted to right now. We currently at any given time we have like anywhere from two to say five or six La Boutanche yeah. wine, depending on the time of year. Right now we have two of them. We've got this beautiful little Riesling number from Andy Knaus in the Württemberg, but we also have this was a hit at our little staff outdoor distance so, gathering. Right. Yeah, this is from Domaine Santa Maria in Corsica of all places. Mm -hmm. I got notes. It's two grapes. Note us. It's Grenache and Niel Lucio. I don't Niel know. Lucio. Niel Lucio. Which there's a lot of debate about that grape. Either it's indigenous to Corsica or it's from Italy. I mean, yeah, from Genoa. I don't it's know. just Sangiovese. Or it's Sangiovese. But yeah, either way. Clones. They think it came over from Genoa, which is the kind of the heart of pesto country in northwestern mm -hmm. Italy. Um, but you know, it's been there for centuries, so it likely now has its own, you know, the DNA is the same, yeah. but it probably, it has its own characteristics. It is really unique. Mm -hmm. um, it's made with just a touch of sulfur um, and is bright, a lot of dark cherry notes. Yeah. We were all like, like, Phil, Phil, yeah, Phil at the party. Yeah, it's super fun, and it's got like some like really neat, like, I don't know, it's like such a good grill wine, because like it can handle like, again, it can handle a barbecue. But you it, really want a barbecue, don't you? I want you? a barbecue all the time. You were just uh, talking about grilling last always time, be, grilling always this Always be time? grilling, always be mulching. I've been doing a lot of yard work. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's it. really fun. It was really great at the at our staff party that we had. Again, everybody kind of kept returning to it. I agree with the black, good black fruit, really, like, easy drinking, but it had some heft to it, I think. It's the biggest takeaway is that it could go, it was as easy drinking as it was. It wouldn't get in the way of lighter fare, but it could definitely... You're gonna be grilling, and it's a full-bodied wine. It's yes. you know, it's it's bright, but it is full-bodied, sure. and it comes from um, the grapes are grown organically on the northern part of Corsica, uh, in a region called Patrimonio, 
which is actually the appellation that the grapes are grown in. And what's cool is there's a lot of limes. It's the only place in all of Corsica that has um, quite an abundance of limestone mm -hmm. soils. And so what normally would be perhaps a, a full-bodied and really rich wine doesn't seem like it. it. It's heavy, but it also is very bright. Limestone soils can kind of amplify yeah. um, apparent acidity, which is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it gets hot there, but then it's, it is, again, we've discussed coastal wines, like you still do have that cooling effect of the sea and like those Residual regions, coastal, so. here we are. Residual <laughs> coastal, actually, both wines we're going to talk about today. Yeah. We just have it in us. This is a coastal wine shirt, friends. Wine shirt, wine shirt, <laughs> coastal wines. Coastal wines. There's a seahorse on the back. This guy's drinking a little wine with waves. Wine with waves. Anyway, didn't mean for that to happen, but just channeling. It's all channeling. good. Yeah, no, super pumped about the coastal wine vibes. It's true. Let's talk about Litrona. Yeah, let's do it. Litrona. There's lots of Litrona because we just got them in, and they're These all very different, and they're so all very cute. delicious. It's kind of dumb. And they're all producers that we've had at some point if we don't already currently have them in the store. Yeah. Um, so, yes. so Litrona, the name Litrona, comes from, uh, you know, back in the day in Spain, and still to some extent, but... I would call my friend Britt and I'd be like, hey, Britt, or I'd, uh, you know, go knock on her door before the cell phone age. And I'd be like, hey, let's go out and have a litrona. Let's go have a liter of beer it's like that the we would college share. days of Spanish drinking. Like, yep. yep, let's, let's hit, like, you know, let's go, let's do it. Let's drink, let's have fun. And so that's why these are named litrona, of course, because they're in liter bottles. Mm -hmm. But they're meant to be really fun, really delicious wines. All of them are made without any sulfur. They're made from some of the best producers in the selections de la Vina, um, portfolio and they're all wines that we have carried here at Henry and Son under like different different labels from those producers yeah. but these are I have to say like you're getting a liter of these incredible winemakers for just over $30 so yeah. in Partida Creus's case those wines usually start at you know the low 30 so this is a really fun opportunity to drink yeah. Um, Partida Creus and for a little bit less money and a liter mm -hmm. and uh, so that's the one we wanted to taste today Britt and I were like let's taste yeah. that Tempranillo. I think all, all the grapes are using like for as these aren't being made in like traditional mass production kind of way very much a natural way which you know it can be argued that that's the most traditional way but um but they're all all the grapes are from like a region where they're kind of known for that grape which is kind of fun to see like mm -hmm. it's nice to see adaptations to tradition i think that's always really cool when you get that so like tempranillo and then you've got and you would maybe think like yeah. tempranillo pardon the interruption you may think tempranillo that's all over spain yep it is but here they call it ul de lebre mm -hmm. um and it it does have a little bit of a different vibe because it is so coastal these mm -hmm. people here they're on the baish penedes coastal yep uh, yes. Partida Creus, they are on the Baix Penedes, so they're in the lower um, part of Penedes, very close to the ocean. And the wines kind of have like a little bit of salinity on the finish. This this Ul de Lebre is very bright, almost a little piquant. Um, it's it likes some air, a lot of a lot of like bright, mm -hmm. uh, light like red current. Yeah, mm. tons it's, of energy. It's well, it does need a little air right away in the glass. It was like pretty. We were like, "Oh, it's a little reductive." It's pretty, it was pretty stanky right away. I don't know. It was good. I mean, I don't know. It has like. But it's like I like me some stanky wine. I don't know. It's kind of like we'll just say it was a little dank, like uh, something else in the world. Um. Anyway, like I mean, West Coast little... IPAs or something. Yes, hop related products. Uh, <laughs> it's so <laughs> somebody will get it. Um, it's. It's really good. I don't know. I really like it. It's super fun. We also This is the fourteenth time Britt and I have passed this bottle, by the way, which is exactly what Litrona is meant to do. Just keep pouring, yeah. keep you passing. Just keep going back and forth. We also we have both had the opportunity to try which one did we try? The other Oh the right Jarel yeah. So yes. Finca Parera makes a wine for under the Litrona label called Jarelo Vermel, which is a grape that actually Check out the color right here. It's got like this, it almost looks like it wants to be Pinot Gris. Why? Because it on the vine, it does have this rosé kind of pinkish color. And even though they do it direct to press, it ages in concrete and it's funky and it is beautiful. And like, obviously you're going to drink this all in one day, but if you don't, it was good, open for quite a few days. We actually kept it open just to kind of have an experiment with it. And it was really delicious over a few days. I tasted it today, and it was on day seven. And it was 
And not all that, like, I don't know, if you're trying to try a bunch of things, or, like, sometimes the leader, like, if it is just two people and maybe you're not trying to have that much wine or whatever, I mean, it's nice to be able to have that, and I really, or I like to open multiple bottles just to try different things, especially yeah. if I'm eating, like, sometimes yeah. it's just fun, and I don't know, I don't like a lot of people, Open so. three, what, what yeah. Britt's trying to say is, open three liters at once, and have a little quarter of a glass or half a glass of each and taste how different they are and then let them evolve over the course totally. of a week because three liters in one week long live the liter and wine. co-op like style wine labels and just getting it done you learning about wines yes supporting great winemakers in tough times some of these are actually to this microbio 2020 vintage one of the first 2020s in the shop so get that while it's hot great verdejo from central uh west spain very close to segovia yeah. and yeah la boutanche uh, litrona selection masal selections de la vina great stuff keep it up guys not only on the importer side but on the winemaking side couldn't do this without you yeah cheers, cheers.